Welcome to Shaman's Drum, a healing circle for community. When the drum calls, you answer the beat. Enter the circle. Kick up your feet. Healing is happening. Breathe and allow. Let us gather together in this now. Hello. Welcome back to yet another episode. This time we are going to be looking at the mid to end of May energies. We're doing this as a video if you're on YouTube today. You can still get all the goodness if you're on um, the podcast, on a podcast provider. You don't necessarily have to see what we're doing, but I want to welcome everyone in before we get started here. Welcome, welcome. If you're new, settle in. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different during the energy forecast. We're going to play a little bit. Um, so see if that's something you're interested in. We're going to do a shamanic drum journey first to our sacred site in our, in our power animal or something. We're going to, we're going to do a drum journey to see what your guides have to share with you about the next, um, couple of weeks. And then when we come back from the drum, drum, we can't talk. We're going to draw cards and see if the cards kind of corroborate, for lack of an only other word, confirm um, anything that was shared with you during the drum journey. So I just saw one, two, three on the counter of the video that's happening here. If you're a returning watcher, listener, listener, watcher, watcher. Thank you so much for being here yet again on a, another show. We're, we're getting close to um, wrapping up our fourth season of this podcast. Uh, so for those of you that have been with me quite some time, thank you for always being here, for sharing your energy with our tribe just by being part of the sacred circle and the sacred space of this community, it raises the vibe and, and brings in more power, more power. So let's first wrap ourselves in sacred space. We're going to do a couple of things to kind of get us in that journey mode. So this would be the type of, um, show where you would want to get yourself set up to do a shamanic journey, even if it is going to be a short one. Um, so that may be getting your journey box or your crane bag or um, your medicine pouch or whatever you use when you journey. That's kind of like a special little sacred space, a sacred time for yourself. Did I bring mine? Oh, it's over there. I don't ha I have mine. It's close by, but it's not right here. But I don't typically show the contents of that anyway. That's kind of like a little, your own little personal thing. But once you get yourself settled, some people like to journey lying down. Some people like to journey sitting up. My personal preference is to journey like standing up and moving about a little bit, but with my eyes closed or with like an eye mask on. But I have to have a little bit more, I have space in the middle of the room, but I, I don't want to do that while I'm journeying with you guys, but that's another way I like to, an active journey. Those are really, really fun. <clears throat> so let's get, let's get together with our guides. Let me just wrap us all in love light and light love, inviting in the guides who overlight this show, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, Pleiadian, Pleiadian power. Um, we are working with a new deck today. I got, I did not realize it was coming so soon, but I did get the um, Nordic tarot in today. So maybe some of our Norse. Today is Freya Day. I usually hang out with Freya on Fridays. I call it like Freya Day instead of Friday. So Freya is most likely here. Odin, whenever I think of the Norse, Nordic stuff, Odin tends to pop in, and we'll see if anybody else shows up. Let's just take a deep breath together. Let's take a couple of deep breaths 
together because I want you to step out of your, I, I always want to say like step out of your mundane reality, but it's, I'm sure it's not. I want you to step out of your everyday reality because it's probably not, maybe it's not mundane. Step out of your everyday reality. Join me in this magical space that is the show. Let's breathe in love. Take a deep breath in. Breathe in love. And breathe out love. Let's breathe in love. Breathe out love. Let's breathe in love. And breathe out love. This is being recorded on a very smoldery time. I don't know. This feels like Beltane. That's not two weeks ago. It was like, but two weeks ago it felt like something else. Um, but there's a lot of passion energy coming through. I don't know. It's going on with this, but this is being recorded. Let's see, Friday before um, the Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse. So in May, 2022, we're already in that eclipse energy because I think the eclipse is Sunday night for me here. We're going to bring in some light language in a second to help clear y'all's energy, clear y'all. I went back to my Texas, Texas, clear y'all's energy. Um, before we drop into a shamanic journey, because I think a lot of you are coming from a space of um, being a little bit flustered or not flustered, but kind of all over the place. And so I want to kind of bring, bring all that in and down and quiet with the sound of my voice. And I'm going to invite in some shamanic elder guides to come and walk amongst this circle that we're in. And just kind of tend to each one of you with whatever is most needed by you in this now. I'm going to let them do some energy clearing on you to just help tend away anything that's kind of keeping you in too much thought or thinking about what's been going on in your day. Because we want you in a nice receptive mode. I've brought back the transformation candle that we lit the last time we were face to face. Um, the one that kind of blew out on the, on, had like a freak out. So this is kind of what it looks like after it blew out. And so if you're listening to this, it's just got a bunch of wax. It kind of came out of the middle of it and kind of all trickled down the side. And then I was looking to see, I'll just show you kind of the wax trail it left on the plate, on the plate, if that little shape looks like or means anything to you. I like reading tea leaves, but I like to read the wax shapes. And my candles always speak to me in different ways. This one looks very much like a star seed being to me. Could mean something else to you. All right, let's line this puppy up. Where's my thing? All right, do I want to peel the wall? It's sometimes I want to like take the little wick and break it down, and so they had me do that here. All right, and I do have to say that the wind is very, very strong today here. We're having 40 mile an hour sustained winds with gusts up to 65 miles per hour. I had to take my dog out, it was like crazy crazy but I did pop the window open a little bit so you may be hearing the wind you may be hearing it as it shakes the house and I was looking for my dog earlier I'm like where is my dog because I think the wind is like freaking around a little bit and she was like asleep in the closet which she's never done before <laughs> she was asleep in the spare in the spare bedroom in the closet like I couldn't find her I was like Did she get out somehow nope because the wind is really loud it's really spooky and it's kind of it's been, it's just, it's just very intense. All right, I'm going to set this. I think I'm going to set it over here. And then I am going to anoint with, I've had this forever. I, I reached out to the person that made this and I guess she doesn't make these oils anymore, but this one usually likes to come up, um, 
her shop name was Bliss Blossom on Etsy, and she kind of would like open her shop and close her shop and open her shop and close her shop. And I've had this one for quite some time. I got it at Pixie Light Horses um, Retreat. Um, she was there too, but this one's called Feral Frenzy with Essence of Red Hot Poker. <laughs> So I told you it feels weird right now, but I do usually pull this one out when I'm journeying because it just has a very deep earthy, it's, it almost smells like I'm smearing on dirt and whatever red hot poker is. I think it's a flower, but it just reminds me of a shamanic journey, like going down the roots of a tree. Mmm, it smells so good. Maybe you guys, I don't know if you're clear... Claire, what is the Claire with the smells? It's not Claire, I don't think it's Claire Sentient, but there's one where you can kind of like smell. So maybe for those of you that are, where smell and taste is one of your psychic senses, like, oh, I hope you could smell this. It's got a tree, a picture of a big tree. Yeah, a picture of a big tree. That's just what I was talking about. It's like going down the roots of a tree. Very fun. And because this is a big, actually I am recording this on Friday the 13th. I didn't realize that's what it was, but you know, that energy is around today. It was a little kind of <laughs> cra crazy. So I am going to light some white sage. I don't typically bring out mama, the big gun mama sage all the time, but heck why not? Hmm. It smells so good. It's, I, that's why I don't like to burn it all the time because when I do burn it, it's like a little treat, a little gift. It's just mm, like a hug from the earth. All right, let me let you have some of that. All right, so we're going to start. So these shamanic elder gods say that they are kind of done, that they're just holding space right now. <laughs> They're holding space in a circle. You know I'm known for my long intros because I want y'all to get in the zone. I don't want to just pop right in and start journeying. I want you to feel it. Feel that. To me, a shamanic journey is like a magical space. I want y'all to be in that magical space. All right, this is gonna be a guided journey to, uh, to an extent. I'm gonna get you to the sacred grove that we always use when we journey. And then we're gonna call in your guide, your journey guide, whoever that is, be it your power animal, um, a shamanic elder. Mm. Love kombucha. A shamanic elder, whoever. This little stone wants to come on. I swear this little stone looks like a hand handing me these crystals. This is the one I found in my backyard. So you may want to have a journey with a little stone, some feathers, whatever. Access for you. And I'm going to go, I know, these. Let me just do a little bit more clearing. I'm gonna do some light language, do a little bit more clearing, then we'll pull out my friend, my drum that I have not played since I moved in over here. It's just like staring at me like, why haven't we played each other more? All right, let's take a deep breath. Let's allow this light language to come through. Let this deer antler just kind of work through your space. It's kind of pulling out what no longer serves. There's a lot of divine masculine energy around today. Shurndika <laughs> 
Say a little Reiki at the same time. All right, those are some friends I have not played with before. So that was a shamanic dragon and a serp like a snake uh, that snake was very powerful i was like whoa uh it's like a shamanic snake in a sense like they kind of work together they they're like a little power they're saying they're a power <laughs> power couple um they work together that was kind of fun i like them i like them all right friends i'm gonna get a little jiggy with it on the drum um hmm it doesn't get too loud because I really this drum can get really loud but I want you to do whatever you do to get into journey pose I don't have the beater today I'm just gonna be using my hand this is the drum I haven't seen it in a while it's our community drum all right so the plan is we're gonna journey out to the grove our my sacred grove. You're gonna meet me there, so I'll guide you, and then we'll see where this goes from here. And the intention for this journey is to find out what's what is spirit bringing you, what is happening for you, what's going on for you in the next. They're saying the next couple of weeks to a month. So your guide may take you somewhere and show you something, or give you something, or tell you something. So just be aware of what that is. It's going to be a short journey. And then we're going to come back and pull some cards and see um, what confirmations we get from the cards. All right.
I'm here. I'm here calling you home. Come to me, friend. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Yoka, hey. 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 Hey, you go, hey. As you enter the sacred circle, we're all going to collectively take a breath together. Hey, hey, hey. Just waiting for everyone to join me here. The guys will tell me when everyone's here. Hey, find a soft spot to land while you're waiting. We've got the grove. We've got the river off to our right. We've got the forest off to our left. Hey, 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 hey. Collectively take a breath, a deep breath in, and let it out. Exhale. Entering the sacred space now. It's your power animal and your journey guide. If you don't have one or you don't who yours is. There are shamanic elders here in this circle that will journey with you. Let's join your journey guide. We're going to lead you out of the circle. And they're going to take you to a place, a portal. Somewhere where you can go down down, down, down to the lower worlds. You're going to either slide down a tree trunk or a tree roots. You could go into the river next to us and you could go down a portal in a little tide pool. You could go into the forest your guides show you. Meet me, meet your guide, not me, meet your guide <laughs> in the lower world. Once you get to the lower world, your guide is going to take you a special space meant just for you and they are in their own way and in a way that works best for you I'm going to talk to you about what's to come in the next couple of weeks to a month out from now say I am open to receive I am open to receive allow yourself to be shown what you most need to know in this now for your highest and best good.
should have shown you or given you information, objects possibly, gifts, talismans, representative of the next two to four weeks. Now ready to bring you back, up, up, up out of the lower world, you'll climb. Coming back with your guide to the sacred grove where we'll meet together, making sure everyone's back. Okay, the guides are saying everyone's here now, so let's take a collective deep breath together. send you home now to your starting point. Thank you for joining us in the grove. We now return to your sacred space for our car drawing. Hey, 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 hey. So right before I started recording this, as you're coming back, this will kind of ground you, this story will, this little story will kind of ground you. As I'm setting up the tripod and the camera and I was getting ready to start filming, I was like, what happened to my water bottle? And so I couldn't find it anywhere. I mean, I looked everywhere. I actually got up, stopped recording. I was like, I need something to start over again. Walked around the house, downstairs. I didn't see it anywhere. And so I went and got this kombucha cup instead. I'm like, okay, I'll just drink that. So this journey just started, right? This journey ended and I opened my eyes and the water bottle was laying right in front of the tripod. <laughs> I love it. Magic. Hi. So good. All right. So I got three very interesting objects gifted to me during this, um, during this journey. And... I'm kind of like, all right, what am I supposed to do with these? So three objects again. We are playing with three objects. Um, three, we're playing with three doors in our journey to Lionsgate series, but these were not those same three objects. So I don't know what this is all about. So we shall see. So I'm going to open up this new deck I just got, and we are going to play with this deck a lot more in our um, Souls for the Sword series that I talked about last time. Um, but I did have a chance to, I don't know, the box is interesting, but they're hard to get in and out of here. It's a sideways box, like it goes on sideways. So I want to play with these. These are really cute. I'm going to give them another good shuffle. It's the back of the deck. And as a special surprise, hopefully next time we talk, I was able to order my spring pack of my Loveland Oracle deck. So we're going to have one of my new decks to play with next time we're face to face. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick some cards and we're going to talk about the energies in the next two to four weeks, what the cards tell us and see how that, oh my God, the wind is, my window is open a tiny crack and you guys can see I'm on the second floor. <laughs> it's so, it's so windy. We're going to see if these cards kind of add to or confirm or anything, anything that you were gifted or shown 
um, during your journey. So you should be fully back now. If not, take a drink of water, um, hold your stone maybe to ground yourself. You still want to be in a receptive state because these messages are going to come through now too. So, all right, here we go. Okay, I'm ready, deck. Now, come on, give it to me. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me. Oh, Rick James. Oh man, that takes me back to my when I did a, when I brought in Rick James and Tina Marie. Okay, I'm just saying, <laughs> Rick James. We had that serpent come in. That Kundalini fire. Give it to me, baby. All right. Okay. So we got, that took a lot of shuffling. We got the hermit and look at the deer in the background and look at that hair. Oh my God. I love rabbits so much. Look at that hair. Look at the ears. Holy smokes. And it says wisdom. So holy crap. Oh my God. Please don't fall. I have, I might have to I might have to get that. I don't want it to fall on my head. We'll just see what happens. Um, this is very interesting though, this particular card, because it looks like the hermit, usually they're kind of sitting under a tree. And this almost looks to me like he's sitting in a water, like in front of a waterfall. And typically the hare or the rabbit is indicative of um, proliferation and procreation and creativity and abundance and the deer which in this case is a doe and not a buck is feminine energy so there's a lot of feminine energy in this card um this hermit is oh my god i can't say that i can't say that <laughs> this hermit is meditating i was gonna say this hermit is masturbating um this hermit is meditating and just, I'm really drawn to the ears on the rabbit. So I think there's a lot of, over the next two to four weeks, there's a lot of getting in touch with your sensuality. Um, I think this eclipse that's coming up, this is timeless whenever you do this thing, but whenever you listen to this, but this eclipse that's coming up is kind of opening up, I saw 3333 33 on the counter, is opening up some more of that like deep, passionate energy but it doesn't seem it's it seems fiery even though there's a lot of water here but i would pay attention to things that are being said around you too and use your um, psychic ears like your clear audience may pick up you may be hearing a lot more um, stuff from the spirit realms we talked about this too about having these healthy boundaries with the spirit realms just as well um, but this this hermit card to me i don't feel like is i'm going to go off in the mountain by myself and just sit there and ignore everything. This feels like a more active hermit. Like he is meditating, but I think he's getting a lot of downloads and a lot of information coming in um, from many different sources, like from the elements, from the animals. So I think that you're just going to be getting a lot, a lot, a lot of information and wisdom coming to you over the next two to four weeks. Now I'm gonna pick up Pleiadian Power. This is my deck. And we're gonna get a little, let me see what else wants to come out. We may go back to that Nordic deck here in a minute. I've got this one coming out. There's very few cards coming out, let's see. So we got Dolphin Angels. They're also spirit guides. So they're here to assist you by sharing deep wisdom. That's wisdom twice and intense love and joy because these, these uh, tarot cards have keywords. So the Hermit card was wisdom. And the Dolphin Angels card is also sharing deep wisdom and intense love and joy. So I think a lot of things that have been hidden are going to be coming, are going to be shown to you over the next two to four weeks. Let's get out. Um, this is my deck, <coughs> my hand-drawn deck, the Dragons of, no, it's not. It's not Dragons of Lincolnshire. Why do I was going to say that? It's Labyrinth of Dragonshire. This deck is very fluid. It's like, you can be whoever you want me to be. Oh man, here we go again. The innuendos. Innuendo. I'm telling you, I can't make this up. Okay, 
this is the card that came out. It's like, um, it's hand drawn kind of like a Y, almost like a divine, div, div, divine feminine symbol. Like it looks like a big Y or like a person with their arms up stretched. And there's like fire to one side of them in a circle, a circle of fire. And there's like a lot of pink dots, but it's card number four and it's allow the serpent to rise. What are we talking about Kundalini fire? Okay, they want me to make a cross out of this, which is significant somehow cross it, not a sword has been showing up a lot for me lately. And so they want me to kind of make a sword. We were talking about souls for the swords. This is just the sword. Let's see what else wants to come out for the tarot, because this is very nondescript. You're gonna get a lot of wit. Oh, ha, 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 the guides are fun. You're gonna get a lot of wisdom. So we've shoveled this deck quite a bit. And three cards just fell out. We were talking about swords. I was just talking about swords. They're showing off. You guys are being cheeky and showing off. <laughs> three cards fell out. This deck is pretty heavily shoveled. And look, look at all the swords that just fell out. <laughs> look at all the freaking swords that just fell out. So we have Page of Swords. With Vigilance and Determination. This sword with the wings is like catching my attention. There's like a little dagger with wings or something. So we got the page of swords. We got the 10 of swords completion. And we got the nine of swords mental conflict. So there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot in the mental body that's coming up to be healed because I would I would say put the mental conflict and the completion together there's gonna be a lot coming out within and around you um, from within and without coming up to be cleared and to be completed um, because I almost see this this in the, the page of swords um, card, almost this like an angelic kind of a cord cutting dagger, like an angelic athame or something coming in to help uh, clear all of these things that are going to be coming up. All of this um, truths that are being revealed. So this page of swords with vigilance, I would just say yes, just be aware as things might pop into your reality. Um, stuff that's being brought to your attention, either your own higher self is showing you or you're being, you know, you're being shown externally and whatever doesn't feel right to you, just ask your guides or the angels or whoever it is to come in and help clear, cut the cords to that, whatever those things are that are no longer serving you. This particular time between the full moon eclipse and the new moon um, in Gemini at the end of May. Very, very potent. Again, we keep saying the word potent for many things um, to occur. So why are you guys telling me that? So they are saying if you are still a childbearing age, uh, you know, watch out because you're either going to be, you're going to be very fertile and it'll be a time for you to either take precaution or measurements if you don't want to have children or it's a very fertile time if you do want to produce a long soul baby just take note of that all right let's see if there's any more cards let me go all right a couple more these two came out together so this theme here is, so that theme was stuff's coming up to be released. This theme is a Pleiadian power message. A dream is just, what is it? A dream is just a dream until you take action. And it's coming out with the forward motion card, which are projects aren't going to finish themselves. Time to get moving. So this is going to be a time of action to get things done. Forward motion. Um, being actually being helped with making your dreams a reality. So I, I feel like it's, you know, if you have something you want to do and you're serious about it and you're committed to it and you have vigilance, this also could come up here too, and you're vigilant about whatever that project is or that thing is, then 
you're going to get support of your guides, the angels, of, you know, of creation, whoever it is, whoever it is, or maybe it's all of them from the, you know, ancestors and elders and all that. However, the, I, I always want to see like, what are the mechanics of who's helping do what on the other side? I wish I had more insight. We might just sit down and do like a little kind of, um, let the guides come in and do a little advanced teaching. Like who does what over there to help us make our dreams come true? What are they actually doing? Now that I've been seeing too much talking, like working with Master Co too much. Like I want to know the science behind like, okay, how exactly are they helping us? What kind of energy work are they doing? And who's doing what over there on the other side? What are they doing? I'm getting curious about that. What's actually happening? So time to get get going on anything you've been thinking about doing. So now's a good time. All right, we just had the Samhain card come up. This is um, Spirit, Soul Work, Ghost Return, Rise, Ancestors, and Boo. So this is actually made, this, this whole deck was actually made from a desk calendar of the month of October. And so the Samhain card came out on the Halloween date of October on the cut the calendar into little squares and I made this deck. But um, yeah, I can say that things are coming up to be released and healed. Um, all that's kind of rounding out the message there. Like just expect that stuff is going to be coming up to be healed, to be released. So it's either coming up to be healed and be released. If you, if it no longer serves you, you can choose to cut the cords to whatever that is and ask your guides to help release those people, places, things, projects, whatever that are no longer serving you. And then the other stuff that you're diligent about is coming up, coming back because we're in Mercury retrograde until June the 3rd, it's coming back for like a review and a reassessment. Like, well, maybe I don't want to put that down. Um, maybe something I kind of have started, I can finish now. And then you'll be fully supported as well to continue to make progress on those things. So just an example, the other day I sat down and I'm like, what do I want to work on now? And our, and my guides were like, well, you don't have paperback books of a lot of these books. They're just on ebook. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And so I went to my Amazon, um, where I create all the paperbacks. And I was like, half of the book paperbacks I wanted to create were like half created. So I get like that sometimes, like I'll have to do something like I'll, I put, you know, I'll do have to work and then I'm like, no, I'll come back to that later. So um, I created paperbacks for Eat Like a Lemurian and Tamper and Jameson, and I'll probably do a few more, but I was able to do a couple of, in one day and then do some other stuff. So if you're interested in the workbooks for Tamper and Jameson, I'm, I'm still going to redo my, my website. I'm still in the progress of fixing my website um, and updating my playlists. So maybe in a next time we talk, it'll have a more tangible feel to it, to where we'll have a section on my website for okay, these are workbooks for I'm um, working with heal, working with forgiveness, working with twin flames and soul flames or something like that, and then we'll have the corresponding YouTube and Audible playlists so that you can, if you want the EPUB free version of the ebook, you can. If you want to get the paperback as a workbook, um, they'll have the corresponding videos and audio teachings out there for you to access and work in tandem with those things. That's my goal. Um, but it's a one woman show here at TLC Human the Soul. So things happen a little bit at a time. So when all of that is ready, the content's out there now, but when it's kind of in a more packageable, kind of a more marketable format, um, then I will do a little walkthrough with you on this show. So you can see what I'm talking about. All right, that is all I think that our guides have to share. Is there anything else? Okay, so they are complete. So I'm wondering, um, I'm curious, Just I just wanna say I'm curious because the th three things that I was shown in my shamanic journey, I don't know how they fit into this card reading that just came up. I have no idea. There were three objects. Um, and so I guess that remains to be seen how your three, how, well, you may not even gotten three things. You may have gotten something else, but I got three things and they didn't really come up over here in this reading. So it was more an adjunct than tying all of that together. So at some point, because we did say that between now and the six, six portal, 
on our Journey to Lionsgate series. That door, a door was going to open and we were going to be gifted the, the doors that would open with three keys that we already had from before. So I don't know how that, I, maybe what happened during your journey now somehow plays into some magical door that will open for you between now and the 6-6 gateway. All right, friends, I think that is all I have to share for now. I want to thank you so much for joining me and we will see you all again soon. Take care.